Scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast, this time talking about something a little bit different, Beer Band The Butcher, yeah, released December 2021, written by Catherine Armitage, Lizzie Hopley and Elizabeth Miles. Notice an all-female writing team. Excellent. Now, what have we got? It's Blake Seven. Now, as we all know from my various podcasts over the years, huge fan of Blake Seven. Blake Seven is the dystopian, futuristic, not quite, well, adventure series. Um, well, you know what Blake Seven is, I don't even go down that road. But, as we know, most of the cast, some of the cast, some of the main actors are no longer with us. And it's getting increasingly difficult to have stuff set in the Blake Seven world and use the original cast. But here we have Beban the Butcher. Now, why this particular one-episode character? Quite clearly, the obvious answer is he was played incredibly over the top by Colin Baker. The Colin Baker. I know. So what we've got is a three-story box set of Colin Baker playing an absolute sociopath. Oh, yeah. He's half pirate, half mental case. He's just not even particularly wired. He's also clever enough to be a villain, but not so clever as to be, you know, well, he's not Villaron, he's not Avon. So what have we got? We've got conscience. Well, let's look at the synopsis, shall we? Beban, the barbarian, the berserker, the bridegroom? Even a psychopath must start somewhere. Beban's criminal career began well before he first met the Liberator crew. Somehow, his career also survived a fatal encounter with them. Beban isn't the forgiving type. Jenna, Villa, and even Travis are about to learn they don't call him Butcher for nothing. What you've got is characters from Blake's Heaven basically popping in to Beban's life as he goes on his particular story arc. Now, there is an origin story which is available very soon. But here we've got three full cast audio adventures and let's face it, that's where my heart belongs. Number one is Conscience by Catherine Armitage. Again, the synopsis. Captain Jenna Stannis and her smuggler crew accept a job to help the people of Samar. Easy work, just fast turnaround, quick profit. But a new rival captain is interfering in the supply chain, and Beerban doesn't care who gets hurt in the process. As far as most people are concerned, this would be his first outing. He's not even calling himself Beerban the Butcher. He's calling himself Beerban the Bad. I know. Colin's performance is just on this side of, well... Well, let's not go down camp or fruity, let's just go in the world of incredibly of its time. This guy is not playing the Doctor by any stretch of the imagination. He's just completely embracing it. And you know that the Colin that we're listening to and the Colin that you're hearing are very different. Because the Colin that you're hearing is the one straight out of the Blake Seven story. He's all dressed in leather. He is Colin Baker in his 30s. Pops even late 20s. This was, you know, 1981, I think. So it just works. There is a rumour that the guy who played Avon when he turned up in Doctor Who wanted revenge for how much apparent overacting or scene chewing that Colin had done in his episode, and he wanted revenge by doing exactly the same in Colin's series. You can see the argument. 
and performance wise just glorious you revel in it as a listener and story one is very very clever you've got a lot of people going on and on about the sanctity of life and there's something about crystals and well i don't really want to go into any more spoilerific territory but let's just say it's remarkably good and it feels so blake seven but best of all jenna's got her own storyline going on and it works this is jenna pre blake seven and this is where she gets to be jenna not just captain stannis and for reasons which are gone into in the story it works it works really well story number two the butcher's wife by lizzie hopley desperate after escaping a certain death baban plans to pair up with the princess and usurp the wealthy planet Ari. unless another secretive visitor prevents him baban and travis are both survivors the question is whether Ari can survive the pair of them. You couldn't get a story further away from the first one. This is the scheming Beban, the Beban with motivation. But remember, he's also a hedonist, and it just works brilliantly. He needs to be a recurring character. Oh, there is a recurring character all the way through these three stories, but obviously I can't tell you who that is, for spoilerific reasons. But this particular person is played brilliantly and their character development just works so after the butcher's wife we have the vengeance games by elizabeth miles the elizabeth miles of verity fame beban is in the mood for settling debts he's hunting down his old enemies literally all the better if he can make a profit from the game villa restall isn't usually the sort to avoid gambling unless he has to stake his life. It's a cracking story in a cracking box set. Villa was always my all-time favourite Blake 7 character. Michael Keating has always encapsulated what it is to be clever but hide it. To be a coward but only because of self-preservation, not because he's actually not brave. He is a hedonist and he is indeed always will be his own worst enemy but these are character descriptions that just work and fit together i loved this box set i am desperate for more beban but you know what arguably he could be two-dimensional if it wasn't for the performance and the writing because he is a generic villain but then again because of colin and because of this great set of writers He's absolutely, definitely not anything remotely close to generic. Here's the trailer and decide for yourself. But if you're humming and hawing, thinking, oh, is it Blake 7 or not? It so is Blake 7. Here's the trailer. Listen for yourself. And until next time, be seeing you. Hello again, Faber. You? Yes. This will be quite the reunion. Baber? But he's dead. He's looking remarkably healthy for a corpse. From Big Finish Productions, the worlds of Blake Seven, Baben the Butcher. Where are my manners? You think I was raised by mutoids? Please, sit down. Can I interest you in a drink? It's no use turning on the charm, Baben. But I always make an effort for guests. Look, new boots, Miss Stannis. Captain Stannis. Oh, yes, you're a captain. I'm a captain. You might think you're better than me, but the Federation treats us both the same. You'll admit that much. Perhaps. So, we need to work together. Leaving so soon? Who the hell are you? Unhand me, or I'll break your arm. Nice and still now. Huh? You don't want to fight a Federation ambassador in front of the Royal Guard. You're no ambassador. And you're not as sharp as they say, Butcher. Travis? Impossible. Says the man who died on Kizan. <laughs> Perfect. Come one, come all. To Baben's bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs>
Baben? Oh, is that his name? Butch? Baben! Baben? Baben! Baben! King Baben. Villa, you don't sound at all happy to see me, and when I've gone to all the trouble of preparing a magnificent banquet. You really shouldn't have. Oh, Villa, Villa, Villa. All you had to do was open one little door. And instead, you almost got me killed. I did no such thing. You blew yourself up. Well, <laughs> So much for the great Baben the Butcher. Baben the Butcher has survived bigger explosions than that. And I crawled from the ashes of a city. Big finish. We love stories. You shut your mouth. I'm a terrible man. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog? Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. <laughs>